much more perfect you can get for a box joint. Well, as we just saw in my first test cut for the box joints, it was an epic fail. You know, everything's supposed to work perfectly the first time, right? The blade wasn't an eighth of an inch. I went up to Woodcraft and got me a new blade. Uh, this one is a flat top grind. It's a full kerf, one eighth of an inch, 24 teeth. It's classified as a heavy duty ripping blade. The salesman confirmed that this has been the choice that when they want to make box joints, this is the number one blade by Freud. Other than getting that box joint set, they make a box joint set and I was tempted, but the price and the limiting factor that the smallest you can go is quarter of an inch.
Last count. Does work. Depth was good. Yeah, I think that'll work just fine. It's a little loose. I think it should be a little tighter. Okay, I figure I better jump in and save you before you guys click away from this video. Um, so finally, I had a success. Biggest problem was my inability to count, apparently. So what I wanted to finally do to, to sum all this up is go over a few tips that I found through all of my misery that will make it much more successful for you if you choose to make this jig and want to use it successfully as well. So uh, let me move the camera so I get a better view here and I'll point out some of the things that I have found that will make life a lot easier. Okay, first and foremost, um, one of the first things that messed me up, which also threw off my counting, is when you take your block of wood and you square it to the blade, you know, you put your block on this side, you can overlap it, you can trim off a piece so you know you're truly at zero. Well, what happens is when you put your piece in and you push it up against that block, what you've got to remind yourself is you're not technically at zero you're actually past the blade, whatever the thickness of your blade is. So in my case, eighth of an inch. So that's what first threw me off because you're already into the first cut. So that's key right there to remember. The uh, next issue that kept giving me problems was the clamping. And they honestly really weren't problems. The issue was that I was doing my test cuts, I was not using wood that was perfectly flat. It had like a slight bow in it. You need even clamping. You can't just put one piece in and then expect it to hold. You know, you got the weakness back here. So always put in, obviously you want something the same thickness, if not one of the other boards. Another tip I have is if this is not one that's being cut, raise it up so it's not actually sliding on the bed. That way you have, you don't have any drag down here from that additional piece. I'm going to be making a video with some other um, add-ons that will make life so much better to take the guesswork out of counting and alignment. I won't give you all of the all of them. I'll give you one for free since I want you to watch that video. Is what I'm thinking of doing is putting sandpaper in here. Get some peel and stick sandpaper on the inside of the back end of the clamp. And that should definitely give a little bit extra grip. And tip number three. So I'm not sure if you noticed in the video that every so often when I would turn the crank, I'd reach over and I'd pinch this side wheel. What I had discovered is when you're turning, even though you get the tactile feel that you're there, sometimes you'd be just swipe it off because you're turning so fast, especially getting a little over eager as I was. Uh, so what solved that problem is I'd reach over and it'd give a little pinch that I knew I was right where I needed to be. So those are three tips I think will give you great success. Sufficient clamping, know that you're not truly at zero, so compensate for that, and making sure you're always on point. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.